Mrs. Yawkey is the Red Sox, but every player that's ever played for the Red Sox, every person that's ever worked for the Red Sox, loves Mrs. Yawkey. Jean Yawkey, known in her time as the Grand Dame of the Boston Red Sox and the soul of the city of Boston, never sought the spotlight. A quiet and generous spirit, Jean was known for her hearty laugh, her love of baseball, and her generous dedication to serving her community. She was a lady that was uh, very distinct, uh, very unique. Jean loved walking around the city of Boston. She loved Boston, so she bought a place, a full-time residence in Boston, near the common, and really spent a lot of her time just walking around. Uh, she would go to the store for herself. She was very unpretentious. Um, she did a lot of things on her own, but she just loved the city. Jean always knew the value of hard work and the importance of philanthropic service. Born at the turn of the century in Brooklyn and raised on Long Island, Jean worked hard throughout her life. She started as a model and salesperson in a New York City fashion house before volunteering with the Red Cross during World War II. After marrying Tom Yawkey in 1944, she dedicated her life to the ownership of the Boston Red Sox, ensuring a legacy that both employees and fans would be proud of. Mr. Yawkey passed away. Uh, she took over the ball club and she was the same way. It just like, I guess they had been married so long that they fed off each other and the way he carried on with the players and the family, she was the same way. She was really into the effective management of how many employees do we have and what are they doing and what are the projects that are going on. And she listened. I mean, it wasn't just blow smoke by her. She would be involved in the conversation. Jean's love for baseball was pure. She faithfully attended nearly every Red Sox home game and in the spirit of giving, made baseball accessible to Boston's youth by providing gloves, bats, and balls to amateur programs around the city. Following Tom's death, Jean ran the Boston Red Sox in a way that was true to Tom's goals and objectives for the team and the organization. She scored every single game, every single play, and knew what play, what number to write down in the score book on the play. She'd ask me questions about it, ask me questions about players, about their background as well as their ability. Uh, and I, I was impressed with the fact that she was that involved in the baseball out of it. She knew the game, she understood the game. She got much more involved in it as general partner to learn more about the game. And in the 25 years that Jean ran the Boston Red Sox, she fielded extremely competitive teams that were rich with diversity, always aspiring to assemble player rosters worthy of the loyal Boston fans. In honor of her leadership in baseball and great love of the game, Jean became a director of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown and holds the distinction of being the first woman ever elected to serve on the Hall of Fame's board. So she's not in the Hall of Fame. She was the first female director of the Cooperstown Hall of Fame. And that's because the Yawkeys, they supported the Cooperstown Hall of Fame in so many ways. She loved the Hall of Fame. And as you know from our activity, it's, it's one of our primary charities. Jean and Tom Yawkey shared a strong connection over their passion for helping others. Though intensely private, Jean spent much of her free time supporting those in need and was forward thinking in seeking out long-term solutions for some of the greatest unmet needs in our community. She was an early and active donor to Boston institutions such as the Pine Street Inn, Rosie's Place, and the Greater Boston Food Bank and in fact, purchased the food bank's first refrigerated truck. Beyond her long association with the Jimmy Fund and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, where she served as a trustee and chair of the board, Jean was also one of the founders of the Tara Hall Home for Boys in Georgetown, South Carolina, and the Family Inn in Brookline, Massachusetts. And when it came to education, Jean cared deeply about providing opportunities for young people and provided countless numbers of scholarships to young men and women during her lifetime. In 1988, after underwriting the Boston exhibit of the Jackie Robinson Foundation's national tour, which provided thousands of visitors with insights into Jackie Robinson's life and legacy, Jean established the Yawkey Scholarship with the Jackie Robinson Foundation, 
supporting scholarship opportunities to minority students. An important relationship that the Yaki Foundation continues today, providing mentorship and scores of tuition scholarships to accomplished young adults. Her legacy absolutely transcends baseball. The generous donations that she has given uh, within the Boston area and outside of the Boston area. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the Yaki Cancer Center with relatives or with um, others. I just really am so proud when I see her name on that building. My oldest son ended up being a deaf mute and there was a little school in, in Charleston. Uh, she used to go with me to take him to school back then and he found out the best thing for him is to go to Cedar Spring School in Spartanburg. So she got in touch with Dr. Walker, who was the, um, the dean of that school, and uh, he was able to get an education. Well, she saw the news story where uh, Charlie Fisk, the parent of uh, this young girl, Jamie Fisk, needed a transplant, and he, he was pleading for uh, a donor to step up to give his daughter, which I don't know, maybe age five, six, or seven, but also seeking some financial assistance to help with uh, the transplant. And so she called and just said, let's step in and help out. What struck me about Miss Yaki is not the fact that she was only a caring person, but the fact that she was able to really transfer that legacy of caring to everyone who was keeping her legacy going. That is a major piece. There's caring people, but then there's caring people who, who pass that legacy on. That's heavy. That's heavy, and that's what she was able to do. I would go to these various charities around town, and I'd introduce myself, and I'd say, I know we're not involved with you at this time, and they'd say, well, actually, you are. We got a big grant from Mrs. Yawkey, but it was but it was with the caveat that we never tell anybody, tell anybody that Mrs. Yawkey was the one to give us this money, so it was an anonymous donation, but without it, we wouldn't be able to do the work we're doing today. And, and, um, and the first time I heard that story, I thought, oh, what a nice one-time story. But I'd go around town, and every time I went someplace, I got the story again and again and again. And it became obvious to me that Mrs. Yawkey was walking around town doing wonderful things for many people and never wanted anybody to know that she was doing these things because in her mind, you did good things because they were the right thing to do. Jean always cared deeply for the people who lived and worked in the communities that she called home. And she was very intentional in using the Yaki Foundation resources to help improve the lives of those in need. Throughout her life, Jean honored the commitment she and Tom shared to care for others. And while doing so, imprinted the Yaki Foundation with her own highly personal style of giving, always with discretion and empathy. Due to Jean's efforts, the thoughtful philanthropy that she and Tom provided throughout their lives continues to impact those in need and will do so in perpetuity. <laughs>